Uh, here's a table which you've seen, I'm sorry, a figure which you've seen before that shows the various volumes and capacities of your respiratory system. Volumes are single measurements, capacities are sums of those measurements. So there's four volumes you have to know and these two uh, capacities. The tidal volume is uh, your, the volume that you inspire and expire at rest and it's about 500 milliliters for an average adult male. This information's all on here, so get that in your head. Uh, this is when the doctor tells you to breathe normally, but instead you turn into Darth Vader and start going you, when you're, before he told you to breathe normally, you were breathing the tidal volume. Now, if you want to take a super deep breath and blow out your birthday cake or, or a pig's house, you go, and you take as big a breath as possible. This is where you'd be engaging, you know, take a giant breath, you engage your, uh, these chest muscles and your, you know, your shoulder muscles and your sternocleidomastoid and your external intercostals and your diaphragm really goes down. So that's your respiratory reserve volume. Uh, if you wanted to blow it all the, blow up all the way from that, you'd go, and you'd expire that, and you'd get past that tidal volume level, and then you'd Then once you got all that air, that amount from the bottom of your tidal volume to the most you can blow out is your expiratory reserve volume. There is some volume uh, left in your lungs. You don't want to squeeze them together. It's like the uh, that plastic wrapping stuff that when you try to put it on, a, you know, your, your stuff to microwave it, it sticks together, and you try to find it or tape. So you don't want your lungs to stick together. So you keep some volume in there. There's a little bit of leftover air in your lungs. All of these volumes together total up to your total lung capacity. Uh, and the first three that I talked about uh, sum to your vital capacity. So vital capacity is basically the difference between your lung volume at complete expiration versus complete inspiration with total lung capacity, including this little bit left over. Uh, this picture has, uh, this, this photograph is available to you uh, in, on one of those links, and it's got all these volumes, but it, they're up there too, and, it, and a little description of them as well. Now on this video, I want to just, I'm going to go kick the light on here so you can see me better. So this is the last video for the respiratory system. <clears throat> yes. So I wanted to remind you to look at that dissection. Uh, photograph of the rat because you need to basically know the things that are that have the asterisks but uh, not all of them we're gonna leave it to the nares right you should be able to notice what know what nares are on a rat that's the nostrils the opening there I'm not gonna be able to show you a pharynx because I have to slice it open and get in there and it'd be really messy but you do want to see the trachea so if you see that ringed tube in the rat that's a trachea the lungs should be obvious to you and then the diaphragm is that flap of tissue below it. Uh, the, everything in your, basically everything in this chapter, so here's your respiratory system chapter. If I haven't covered it, you still gotta kinda look at it. So things like pulmonary ventilation, external respiration, internal respiration, uh, cellular respiration, know those terms. Those were covered in lab before the break. Uh, and uh, Boyle's Law, which is P1V1 equals P2V2. You just solve for whichever variable you don't have, and I've shown you guys this uh, several times now, so I'm not gonna do it again. Suffice it to say that if it's in the book, if it's in the lab book and I, and, and I haven't talked about it, you should probably know it. But if I've talked about it, you should really know it. All right, thanks.